Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scraps and Logos of Britain. Each week we'll take a look at a class of locomotives that didn't make it into preservation. All of these classes will be standard gauge and owned by either a pre-grouping railway company, one of the big four railway companies, and or British Railways. While some classes will get a new build member, most of these classes will be scrapped and likely remain scrapped. Here we go! Our next episode is on the LNER C4 Atlantics. Around the turn of the century, the Great Central Railway was hoping to see an increase in passenger revenue. Only a few years had passed since the railway had rebranded from the erstwhile Manchester, Sheffield, and Lincolnshire Railway, and the company had inherited a number of 440s for express passenger trains. Unfortunately, these proved to be underpowered and struggled to keep to time with tight schedules. As well as passenger trains, freight traffic was also increasing rapidly. To help with these increasing loads, John Robinson introduced four new locomotive designs. The 9J-060s for light goods trains, branch line trains, and secondary work. The 11B-440s for express passenger trains over the London Extension the 8A-080s for heavy coal trains over the Pennines, and the Class 8-460s for fast fish trains around Grimsby, and express passenger trains. However, the 11Bs were not powerful enough for the increasing loads on the GCR. To solve this problem, Robinson asked Bayer Peacock to build four locomotives in 1903. Two 460s, numbers 195 and 196 of the 8C class, and two 442 Atlantics, numbers 192 and 194 of the 8B class. Both classes were based on the class 8. After a bit of testing, it was found that the 8B steamed much more freely than their 460 counterparts. As a result, no more of the 8Cs were built. Instead, Five more 8B Atlantics, numbered 263 to 267, were built in 1904. The next 12, numbered 1083 to 1094, were built by the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow in 1905. The final eight members, numbered 260 to 262, 358, and 360 to 363, appeared from Gorton Works in 1906, bringing the class total to 27 members. With a 180 pounds per square inch, 5 foot boiler, 19 by 26 inch outside cylinders, and 6 foot 9 inch driving wheels, the 8Bs could provide 17,729 pounds of tractive effort. Initially, numbers 192 and 194 had shallow fireboxes in order to meet the restrictions imposed on the Class 8s. However, following the removal of these restrictions, numbers 192 and 194 were rebuilt with deeper fireboxes in order to match the production locomotives. In 1908, Robinson ordered number 1090 to be rebuilt with three cylinders for trials against his 8D and 8E Atlantic compounds. Number 1090 was chosen to be the test locomotive because its cylinders and frames were damaged whilst running along at speeds. The Stevenson link motion was replaced with Walshart's valve gear on all three cylinders, with the two outside cylinders powering the rear driving axle and the inside motion powering the lead driving axle. The only other GCR locomotives with Walshart's valve gear were the rail motors. In this form, number 1090 lasted a good 14 years before being reverted back to two cylinders with Stevenson link motion in 1922. In 1912, some of the 8Bs received superheating. Also in 1912, 20 received larger cylinders and 10 inch piston valves. These larger cylinders were the same 21 by 26 inch cylinders as those fitted to the 8K 280s of 1911. This brought the tractive effort up 
to 21,658 pounds. These modifications took place when the 8Bs came into the works to get their cylinders replaced. The first seven 8Bs only had sanding gear on the front set of driving wheels. The rest of the class had sanders on all of their driving wheels, whilst the two prototypes were later fitted with another set of sanding gear on their rear driving wheels. From 1921, all of the 8Bs were rebuilt with Ross Pop safety valves and steam-powered ash ejectors. However, the latter was not well liked and later removed. The first 8Bs were sent to Gorton and Needston, where they hauled express trains from London to Manchester and inter-regional excursions to Western Supermare, Weymouth, and as far south as Plymouth, as part of an agreement between the GCR and the Great Western Railway. In 1906, one was allocated to Leicester, and between 1913 and 1923, 16 were allocated to Leicester, and 11 were allocated to Woodford. The class soon gained the nickname of Jersey Lilies, after the famed musician and actress Lily Langtry. All 27 members passed into LNER ownership, being reclassified as C4s. In 1925, number 6085 was cut down to the LNER's loading gauge and given the standard flower pot chimney. The rest of the class were cut down between 1936 and 1939. In 1929, the LNER introduced four variants of the C4s. The C4 stroke ones were the original saturated locomotives that had slide valves. The C4 stroke twos had slide valves like the C4 stroke ones, but were superheated. The C4 stroke threes were the superheated locomotives that had piston valves. The C4 stroke 4 was the cut down C4, number 6085. She also had piston valves and a superheater. By 1936, all of the C4s received superheaters, and by 1939, all of the C4s were cut down to the LNER composite gauge. From then on, the C4s were classified as either C4 stroke 2 or C4 stroke 4, depending on what kind of valves they had. By 1932, the C4s were starting to struggle with the sudden increase in traffic loads. By 1936, they were replaced on express passenger trains on the Great Central Main Line by the B17-460s. However, the C4s were still able to travel on most of the LNER system. Due to them being cut down to the LNER's composite gauge, and the fact that they had an 18 and a half ton axle loading. This saw some of the class move away from the Great Central Main Line to the Great Eastern Main Line around Cambridge, Colwick, and Ipswich. The rest of the C4s remained on ex-GCR territory, being allocated to Immingham and Lincoln. They also hauled trains on ex-Great Northern Lines alongside the C1 Atlantics, the K2 Moguls, and the K3 Moguls. Despite mainly being allocated to stopping passenger trains, the C4s were sometimes used on freight trains, particularly fish and milk trains. Although their large driving wheels gave them a great turn of speed, the C4s didn't have as much adhesion as their 460 counterparts. The first withdrawal was number 6090 after an accident at Banbury in 1939. This same loco was the one that was rebuilt as a three-cylinder locomotive in 1908. The remaining 26 C4s held on until the introduction of Edward Thompson's B1 460s in December 1942. By this point, 
it became clear that the days of the C4s would be numbered. The first official withdrawal was number 5266, which went in October 1943. By that November, number 6087 had also been withdrawn, but withdrawals stopped due to a lack in motive power. In 1946, the remaining 24 members were renumbered 2900 to 2904, 2906 to 2910, and 2912 to 2925. Numbers 2905 and 2911 were going to be used on numbers 5266 and 6087 had they not been withdrawn. Withdrawals restarted in 1947 with number 2913 going that April, number 2906 going that November, and numbers 2904 and 2907 going that December. The remaining 20 all survived into British Railways ownership but withdrawals under BR were rapid, with the first member, number 2924, going from Boston in January 1948. She was followed by five more members later that year. The year with the most withdrawals was 1949, with eight members going. The remaining six members were allocated to Boston, Lincoln, and Immingham. Five of these had gone by November 1950, number 2901 becoming the last of the piston valve C4s to go from Boston on the 28th. The final withdrawal was number 2918 from Lincoln on the 2nd of December 1950. Number 2918 was also the last of the LNR Atlantics to be withdrawn, outlasting number 62822 by five days. None of the C4s survived into preservation. This series is inspired by locomotives of Great Britain, by a railway land and sea, and top 10 extinct British steam locomotives by Pendennis Castle. Links to both their channels are in the description below. As always, if you have any suggestions for a future episode, then let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, and you want to see more like this, then feel free to like and subscribe. And I shall see you next week when I discuss the London and Southwestern Railway H15 class. Take care everyone, goodbye for now.